Alright. I figure I was just gonna take this one slow. You can relax a bit. Yeah. Team Salsa. Let me have been making highlights. Made a wild factor out of my life. Even on the low, I'm in the limelight. Shine Young boy came back delivering ass. Past the killer attack has been given a pass. Nigga, what you know about that? And bring it back. Back to the back to the past. When niggas a rap, nigga put it on for the stack. Killing the track. Wag niggas when I act pack a trap. Rat is clapping back. Trap is stacking cash. Master Cadillacs. Active action back. That's the habitat. Quick, fast, little nigga won't make it. Shit wack cause he in a no station. Bitch act like he in a rotation. But the switch tracks when he be a location. Free signs with a Liverpool greatness. Y'all ain't able to live in no spaces. Explain why she's in a location. Got your baby mom on a give a go basis. Classic. Lyrical assassin. Waiting for a deal while I'm killing with a passion. Little bit scared marks on the tracks. Be black and I spats on the track. Got a mask. What happened? I do the shit naturally. Niggas ask to me. So you better know limits like Master P. The way I spats on beats. Niggas can't touch kid as a Catholic priest. I mean, the best for me. I'm like. All right, guys. Today I want to talk about bulking, shredding, and when you know it's the right time to step on stage for your first competition. First, let me talk about bulking because it seems like these days I've noticed, especially with the younger generation of kids that are, you know, they start bodybuilding, they are watching everyone on YouTube and they're watching everyone in the magazines and they're seeing this end result. They have the conception that they could do a 12 week prep and have the same end result as some of the best pros in the world do or even just some of the good guys in the gym, in the local gym. First and foremost, let's get this straight. You don't need to compete to be a good bodybuilder. There's plenty of people who bodybuild and they never step on the stage. The stage is just one aspect of it. You can be a great bodybuilder, never step on stage, remember that. But as I was, I was saying, 12 weeks, 14 or 16 week preps ain't gonna cut it. It's not enough time unless you're coming from a you know, like some kind of football or really hard training background where you acquired all this mass, you know? But the majority of people um, who are getting involved in this sport now, they don't really come into the gym with a lot of mass or, you know, good base or structure to start with. I started at 139 pounds and I trained every single day for six years straight before I even considered competing. And it went from 139 all the way to 240 pounds, only to come back down and compete at like 185, okay? You guys really have to focus on acquiring as much muscle mass as possible. And that happens in a bulking phase. A lot of guys these days, they, want, they don't wanna bulk because they're on Instagram and they see the perfect selfie with the perfect abs. Instagram, we're only showing our highlights. We're not gonna post bad pictures of ourselves. We're not gonna show ourselves shirtless in, you know, without vascularity or a six pack. Um, it just doesn't happen. These young kids growing up are, are, are thinking to themselves, oh, Sadiq is ripped all the time. This guy's always ripped. Like, it's not true. Okay, the best pros in the world, they always bulk, they always take time off the gym, they get as big as they possibly could. When you have more mass, you're able to lift heavier. When you lift heavier, you're able to build muscle. When you're consuming a lot of calories, you can build muscle. There is such thing as lean bulking, but it's a lot more difficult and it's not gonna be effective or as effective for younger guys. So my advice to you is just to go through a long bulking phase. And this has to take, you know, I would say at least a few years, you know, but we're talking about kids who only had a gym membership for a few years and they already want to step on stage and do really hard shows. What I want to encourage young guys that are getting into this to do is get comfortable just training, get comfortable lifting heavy, get comfortable acquiring mass. I promise you, the more muscle mass you have, the easier it is to get lean. You can't, it's going to be very difficult to like start at 175 pounds and like want to be ripped to the bone at like 170, you know? It's not, it's, a lot of that is water, a lot of it is fat, okay? So get as big as you possibly could. My last Olympia, I went up to 247, and I competed at 210 pounds, okay? So that's over, that's 37 pounds of mass that I was walking around with, you know? And I had a four pack and I was bloated, but what mattered was how I looked on stage. That was what was important to me, and that's why you're doing this. It's who looks best that day. Let's say your goal isn't to look good on one particular day, on one particular weekend in the year. You know, let's just say, like, it's important for you to look good all the time. That's great, you know, like, that's really awesome. I totally respect that. 
But to be a really good and really competitive uh, pro in this sport, you have to go through these cycles of getting big, getting lean, getting big, getting lean. But what I want to tell you guys is don't train for a year, you know, put on 20 pounds and then want to get lean right away. Like keep on building your mass. I tell my clients all the time, have an image of their ideal physique. You know, for example, when I was growing up, I always gravitated towards the guys that were like 200, 220 with abs. I never wanted to be 170 with abs. I didn't want to be 290 with abs, you know. So guys I looked up to when I grew up um, in this sport were guys like Greg Plitt, rest in peace. Um, David Morin, good friend of mine. Steve Cook, he's been killing it for a while. Um, especially on the business aspect, even physique was great. Ulysses, tremendous physique. Simeon, tremendous, you know. And all these guys were like right there. 200, 220, so that was always in the back of my head, you know? All right, to be 200 ripped, I gotta be 230, I gotta be 240. And you could say it's bro science, but listen, a lot of bodybuilding is bro science. I have a lot of experience. I've been training for 14 years. I've been competing at the top level for over six years. So you can't get really far in this industry without having a significant amount of knowledge. So I always knew what I wanted to achieve. I always knew what, what physique I wanted to acquire. Before you start your shredding and your leaning up phase, please take some solid years where you're lifting heavy, eating a significant amount of calories, resting, sleeping. You guys will be way happier with the end result. As I was saying before, I also want to talk about competing. Like guys are rushing into competing so quick and I think social media has something to do with it. I think people out there with their YouTube channels, um, with their Instagram, with their Facebook, et cetera. Like they wanna like, they wanna like do something that's incredibly hard, which I commend and I admire, but they don't really wanna do it for themselves. They wanna do it for the viewers. They wanna do it for, you know, the likes, the follows, the comments, the repost, F that shit, okay? That's like the worst reason to do this sport because this is such a hard sport. It's just taxing on your mind, your, your family, your relationships, your health. Like, so if you're not doing it for each internal reasons, then I don't know how far you could possibly get. You know, there has to be some kind of inner drive. There has to be some kind of passion. You have to love what you do. If you're a musician, you really have to love. Love the art, love the craft. It's the same thing with the weight room. You have to love, you gotta fall in love with the weights. Thank God I started competing when I did. So I competed when I was 24. I think my first show was late 2011. Instagram was a thing, but it wasn't popular at all. It was not popular. It, there was no posting a shirtless selfie once a week. There was not posting my cheat meal. There was not posting anything. Like, it wasn't about other people. It was about me wanting to climb that ladder. My first show, I got second. I wanted to be first really bad. When I got first, my next goal was to turn pro. When I turned pro, the next show was to win my, like, win my first pro show. Then I wanted to win the Olympia, you know? It wasn't about, like, let me broadcast this to the world. Let me get a professional photographer to follow me around and show people, you know, what kind of accolades I have. Let me show people how great I am. Something great has come out of social media for me. It's made a whole career for myself. It's allowed me to have wonderful things in my life. A nice car, a nice house, you know, etc. But the guys that are gonna get ahead aren't the guys that are focused on their followers. And they're not gonna be focused on their likes. So put in those years of hard work in the gym. Go through years of bulking. Put on a significant amount of muscle mass before you decide to shred down. Because when you do shred down, you'll realize a lot of it is water. A lot of it wasn't real muscle. And when you are shredding down, there's a process there. You have to really know how to shred down without losing muscle. And if you're doing this for the first time, most likely you're going to lose a significant amount of muscle if you don't know what you're doing. And most of the cases, people learn through trial and error. They don't learn from like following a textbook or following a coach. They try it. They learn from their mistakes. So do a few shows, really focus the essentials of just being big and lean. You don't wanna be just lean, you wanna be big. So don't start shredding until you guys put on that size. And don't start competing to impress people on Instagram. And don't start competing to get your subscribers on YouTube up. 
If you're gonna compete, do it for yourself. Do it because you love it. And that's my advice to you guys. And I'm very passionate about this because I've had young guys in the gym come up to me for the last few years. Man, I wanna be a pro so bad. And the first thing I say is, why? And they look at me and they're, they kind of shake their head like, what do you mean? What, 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 I want to be like you, man. I was like, yeah, but why do you want to be like me? Oh, dude, because you have like the, the nice car and like you make a lot of money from your sponsors and this and that. I'm like, dude, listen, stop. If you're focused on the money and the nice car and the sponsorships and the ads in the magazine, you're never going to make it ahead. You're going to get beaten by some guy who just loves the craft, loves the grind. So don't give me that. I want to turn pro shit. Focus on being the baddest in the world, the best guy that you could be, because that was always my goal, and it continues to be my goal. That's how you get ahead in life. I think I did a good job getting my point across. I don't want to discourage anyone from competing. I love competing. This is this is just. I want to get your head straight. I want to reprogram you guys. Just social media, and like it doesn't mean like delete your accounts, but focus on yourself, guys. Don't focus on the bullshit. It's all noise.